will say Amen, Amen, Amen. right now. Thank you, O oh God, for this gathering, O oh God, to celebrate the life of our brother Douglas Brown. Yes, yes, yes. Lord, we thank you right now that you have allowed him to become one of the ancestors, O oh God. Well, well. And God, as he has joined the ancestors, Lord, he leaves his family here grieving, wanting justice for him, O oh God. So God, right now, I stand before you, a man of God, a diabetic, an amputee who has come to say that Douglas Brown was treated wrong and justice is needed right now, oh God. So God, we ask that your justice would roll down like a mighty stream, oh God. And God, right now, in the mighty and master's name of Jesus the Christ, come and attend to the needs of his family, oh God. Come and attend to the needs of the people that are have health issues in Fulton County and all jails across this world, oh God. The penal system is wrong in what they've done. They are cruel in the way that they treat persons with illnesses, oh God. That may be mental, physical, or emotional, oh God. And God, we need justice right now. We need structural changes. We need correction, oh God. These correction facilities need to be corrected in their own actions, oh God. And so God, right now we stand as a people, oh God, coming together knowing that you are able to do anything but fail. So right now we pray for legislative change. We pray right now for your kingdom to come on this earth, oh God. Your will says, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we pray this prayer now in the mighty and master's name well, of well, Jesus the Christ. Yes, and let the people of God say, Amen. Amen. My friends, we have a number of organizations who have been a part of organizing this prayer vigil. And tonight we're going to hear from a couple of those individuals. We want to give people a chance to continue to assure this family that they don't stand alone. That's that right. we won't leave them alone, but there are agencies and groups and individuals who are not only with them in prayer, but are going to be out front with them in action. Yeah, in and tonight we're going to hear from a couple of those speakers. We're going to ask because of the hour, the folks that limit their comments to two minutes. I know it's difficult. Being a speaker myself, it's tough. But the first speaker we're going to ask up is a young man who's been working hard in our community. He is the founder of the National Action Network, the good warrior, Brother Marcus yeah. Cole. And if he would come, yeah. give him a hand, Brother Marcus right. Cole. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right now. What do we want? Justice. Justice. What do we want? Justice. Justice. And when do we want it? Now. And when do we want it? Now. now. And when do we need it? Now. now. Yes, sir. All right. All right. All right. Now. If you're from Atlanta like I am. You know that this building is known for abuse, neglect, and corruption. If you're from Atlanta like I am, you know that you know that this building has a nickname. It's Gladiator School. Has anybody heard that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'll be real brief. Gladiator, an armed combatant who entertains audiences in the Roman public and Roman Empire in violent confrontations with other gladiators wild animals, and condemned criminals. Some gladiators were volunteers who risked their legal and social standing and their lives by appearing in the arena. Most were despised as slaves, schooled under harsh conditions, socially marginalized, and segregated even in death. Does it sound familiar? Yeah. If that's gladiator school, then imagine what the administrative staff looks like. It is a lot of abuse, neglect, and corruption. We don't believe the phony story about not accepting treatment. I don't care what the laws say. We know when officers make their rounds at times, it is just for the video and to log it. This does not mean that they checked on every inmate. Which we're going to really lead to the fact how Mr. Brown was found. Urine stained diaper, feces stained diaper, and in his own vomit. You'll hear a lot of people, a lot of uh, agencies that are at fault, and I'll let up to speak to that. 
My last point before I go, because you hear a lot about Corizon, and the medical, the medical uh, company that's responsible. A lot about Grady. My last point before I go. The reason why Mr. Brown is even in there in the first place. Go hard, man. Should you have to go to jail go hard. because you're behind on your child support? Oh, no, oh, no. Now I'm not condemning somebody taking care of their family. That's right. But as we talk about these other entities, entities, let's also discuss how child services Come on now. puts brothers oh, yeah. in jail yeah. that separates them from the family yeah. and you still ain't getting the money in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Where the you can't make no payment from Jay. Stop abusing, misusing, and for those of you behind the walls at an administrative position who have a complex, stop coming to work and taking it out on people who might have done something wrong and some who have it, and are trying to pay their time to come back to their families. Justice for Douglas. Justice for Douglas. Justice for Douglas. Justice for Douglas. All right, my friends, our next speaker is going to be one who is no stranger to the Atlanta community, a man who's been in the yard for many years, out front on college, but sometimes even he stood alone. Our brother, Brother Joe Beasley. Yeah. 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 Thank you very much, and to the Brown family. I think what we have behind us here a systemic national problem. Right. Right. Now, a group of people, uh, mainly African American, well, poor, well. And male, and without equality. <laughs> this is repeated throughout this region, throughout the state, throughout the South, throughout our country. And as I don't know what the census is, but I can almost assure you that the census. In this jail, it's probably 80% black. Come on now, sir. 85. 85 percent black. 99. And it's the same all over the South. That's yes. something that, that is wrong. Yeah, yeah. And there must be some decisions made. I've been had, having diabetes for 25 years or longer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't have to die. Uh, all right. Have diabetes. It's right. a terrible right. illness. That's right. And so, you know, while Sheriff Jackson is someone that I personally uh, like. That's not the point. The point is, uh, <laughs> the book stopped with it. All right, so all right. We need to have some answers. Uh, and then uh, my good friend uh, Paul Howard, who has some responsibility. Yes. We expect uh, a thorough investigation uh, to come forward. And, uh, and, I, I, and I think this, these decision makers, people like uh, that uh, governor of ours, well, he didn't give a rip about nobody. He right. is a damn snake. Right. We, we've right. got to, to really begin to uh, look at this. Right. About poverty. There's no opportunity for them. No, no job. No, no. Right. So the option is uh, to get in trouble, to get locked up. And if you can't get a job, how the hell are you going to pay your That's child? Okay, okay, that's right. right. It's impossible. Oh, yes. right. So it's time oh, for us to start looking at some of these things. Oh, that Meantime, legislation got to be changed. The Brown family, uh, we're with you. Uh, we appreciate you, Brother Davis, and, and the way you lead the charge uh, all over. Right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. all right, my friends, very shortly we're going to hear there are some questions that have been raised as to what is happening. But I want you to understand the power of people because just from last night, uh, the press conference and what this group of different volunteers and this family has done, uh, there's some action. We're going to hear some from Senator Ford later right. on and this attorney, Miley Mel Davis, right. uh, the liberation attorney. But before we get to them, because there's some information in terms of some meetings with some of these people that we're talking about who are in authority that we need to meet with that ensure that justice is served. But at this time, we're going to call on Reverend Derek Rice, the pastor right. of San right. 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 He's right. a right. warrior in his own right. right. Reverend Derek Rice. Right. 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 What's up, people? All right, all right. Um, I, I, unlike most of these rallies, I'm not here to try to get folks fired up. I want to give everyone some very pertinent uh, empirical information. This company, Corizon, you only just hear the name of this company. It's called Corizon. It is the largest healthcare contractor in the entire country. Uh -huh. Corizon. Remember Corizon. 
Verizon has been sued nearly 700 times in the last four years for these kinds of incidents. Nearly 700 times. In New Mexico, this company was responsible for people being sexually abused in the jail. When the investigation took place, they realized that they were going to lose the case and paid almost $2 million to keep the case away from the books. Horizon. But they continued to operate the way that they normally do. There was no discipline within the company. Why? Because it ain't but about 30 or 40 people out here today. They think they can get away with it. Because they think that the community doesn't care about our people. That's New Mexico. In, in, in Philadelphia, there were contracts that were up. And the county in Philadelphia where the contract was up said, you need to hire some black folks. Horizon said, no, we won't. Mm -hmm. they, they set up a, a strong sort of company and got caught, had to pay $3 million, but they still got the billion dollar contract and they got away with it. Why? Because it ain't but 30 or 40 people out here. They think that they can get away with whatever they want to get away with. In, uh, um, uh, uh, in Florida, there were incidents where the doctor said do X, Y, and Z. Carraza said we will not. Two people, brain damage that was irreversible, died within three days, had to pay without letting everyone know exactly what the, what the facts of the case were, but they kept the $10 million contract. We need to not only make sure that Paul Howard does what Paul Howard needs to do, we recognize that the sheriff needs to do what the sheriff needs to do, but we need to let the Fulton County commissioners know Corazon doesn't need to have a contract. Yeah, that, there you go, that's it. It's that's clear right. that when we hit folks in their pockets, that's when change takes place. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we need to make sure that we're clear on who Corazon right. is right. and we let folks know that no more when we stand by as if black life or anybody else's life does not have any value. Right. Justice for Mr. Brown. Yeah. Yeah. Justice no, for Mr. Brown. Justice, justice for Mr. Brown. No justice, All right, no Reverend Darren Rice. No justice, no, no, justice, no, no peace. No justice, no, just, no, no peace. peace. No justice, no peace. No justice, no, no peace. peace. All right, justice for Douglas Brown. At this time, my friends, we are going to move along. Let me just say this. I don't know all of the facts in this case, but I do know one I thing. Know that's right. I know that this family and Brother Brown and this community deserve some answers. That's right. And that's why we're going to stay on it until those questions I answered. At this time, we're going to bring up another sister. I mentioned some brothers and others who've been in the field for a long time, but a young lady I met when I was a little boy. I can tell you, you know that's been a long time. <laughs> <laughs> Diane Mathewitz. Oh, yeah. Diane. Yeah. Where's yeah. Diane? Come on, Diane. I was a little boy, Diane. All right, Diane. <laughs> Tell them y'all about the same Well, I, I wasn't aware that I was going to be asked to say anything, but I will say this. This issue of uh, misconduct, it goes from everywhere. It goes from the stop and frisk on the street. It goes from the uh, prosecution. It goes to the charges that are brought against poor and working people, mostly people of color. And this whole system, really, is rotten to the core. I want to say that again. This whole system is really rotten to the core, rotten with racism, and rotten with classism. And there's only one way, really, for all of us to counter that. And that is that we have to really forge unity among all those who are affected. I want to express my condolences to the Brown family. I want to express my condolences to every one of you who has family members that have been brutalized by the police, falsely imprisoned, sentenced to long terms. And I want to pledge that as long as I am able, I will be here with you. And you can tell Diane has been around. She didn't even take the two minutes. She cut it to one. She knows when the program needs to move on. Let me tell you, there are a couple of other speakers we want to hear from, and I want to bring them up and ask that they stay in that minute because uh, the family we're going to hear from, but Attorney Davis and then Senator Ford had some update on these meetings, the letters that we sent out on yesterday requesting to meet with both the sheriff and with the Fulton County District Attorney. But before we go uh, to that point, we're going to ask these other speakers who were coming. We had uh, the next speaker was with Jobs for Justice, Brother Roger Sykes. All right. Bring him on. Bring him on. All right, y'all. Right. 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 
I, know, uh, I, I just pulled in probably about 15 minutes ago with, with Reverend George Johnson. I know when I stepped out the car, you could, I could just feel it in my gut. You know, the just kind of the ugliness, the ugliness of this of this place. It's it's, it's foreboding. Um, you know, and I often just trust my gut, my instinct, and I, and I, I know other folks feel it too. If it's something ugly, we can feel it. You know, this place right here is it's an ugly place. It just makes made me sad that to hear about what happened, y'all. It was good to meet y'all. Um, yeah, yes, was it yesterday? Yeah, and hear from y'all. Um, you know, I, I think if the folks have said it, y'all. I mean, if we're you know if we're worried about folks getting child support, right? If, that, if that's our concern then the answer is to provide good jobs in Atlanta, there you go, there you go. right? We don't need more of these jails. We need these places to be shut down. We need that money. All these, this money that we're, that we're giving to Corizon, that we're giving to this jail right here, let's create some public sector jobs and let's employ Douglas Brown. Let's employ the folks that need jobs in our community and get to the root of these issues, y'all. Man, I mean, so I'm, I'm, I'm with y'all. I mean, jobs with just, we're going to stand with y'all. And, and I think, you know, we got to connect these issues, y'all. Connect this funding to jobs, to good education, to, to the racism that underlies all this. we got to connect it. Um, we're we're going to stand stand with y'all. Um, uh, we'll, we'll be here. Good job, Rod. All right. Thank so this you. time, we're going to ask the representative from the New Black Council Party to be a brother who seems to be the child. Come on, Chairman. Come on, Brother Chairman. All right. All right now. They say one call. That's all. But you don't see them out here. Uh -oh. yeah. That one call got to be the Davis and Bozeman law firm. Yeah. Yeah. See, our problem is we've been playing too much, so now people play with us. Yeah. Nobody takes us serious. All right. Gee. We just left the 50 year protest of Dr. Martin Luther King in the SELC. If Dr. King was here, he wouldn't even got to speak. He would be too radical now. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. We want to talk about New Black Panther Party, NAACP, and the S, I uh, mean, uh, Dr. King's organization. One thing we all got in common, uh, we were all assassinated by the federal government. Mm -hmm. yeah. Dr. King was killed by the FBI. Gee. Huh? Gee. Fred right. Hampton was killed by the FBI. Yeah. And the NAAC National Field Marshal, nobody who pulled the trigger, Mega Everett, was killed by the FBI. Yeah. And then you want to divide us because, and call us radical. I just got out of DeKalb County Jail, and the reason Mr. Bozeman and Davis Law Firm did me pro bono because I always show up. So if you want to go to our people and you need them and you don't have fun, show up for the families. When it's your turn. And I was on 23-hour lockdown for putting a $10,000 reward out for Zimmerman, and now they wish somebody would have took it up. Look at him. That's right. He's embarrassing them now. We didn't do it out of hate and racism. We did it because they had a wild animal in their hands. That's right. And here we are standing in front of the jail. I know what it's like being locked up 23 hours a day. All right. And, and they talking about they check on you. Yeah, they check on you. Talk here, man. This system pays. Years ago, we all know that this became the paying business. And so now behind every tree in Georgia, you got a penitentiary. Yeah. Now behind every uh, school, you got a penitentiary. Yeah. So now they got to fill these jails up and ship us out of here. And every day, wherever you at, you see that trailer, that van, and that bus coming through with your kids on it. And they be coming from what? Jail. They sit in here one to two years waiting to go down to Fulton County to get shipped out. That's the saddest ride in the world when you see that bus coming through them red lights taking your baby. But you know the problem is? We're desensitized. We see a police search somebody, we say the nigga done something. Why you say that? How do you know he done something? You're always listening to the media. What have the media done for you? Out here, not with uh, Mal Malcolm X, not with Garvey, not with Ted Turner, uh, Nat Turner. I am with, with Joe Man, Martin Luther King. Dr. King, in his last speech, he said, I've been to the mountaintop. Yes, you heard him. He said, I ain't fearing nobody. I've seen the coming of the Lord. They like when you say that. 
But the speech was 47 minutes. They gave you three minutes. Did you check the other 43 minutes? Okay. When he said a man can't ride your back unless it's bent. Yeah. When he said Abernathy told me the black man got to stop scratching when he don't itch and laughing when ain't nothing funny. Yeah. Did you listen to the point when he said they say we poor because we're divided? But he said 1967 we spent $30 billion. And we'll be the fifth richest country in the world. This is his last speech. He said, I like New Jerusalem, but we need a new Atlanta. He said, I like New Jerusalem, but we need a new Tennessee. A new New York. He said, yeah, when we get to heaven, we're going to walk around in the white clothes, but we need some shoes and some suits right now. You better get back to your right now business. He said, so stop buying Wonder Bread. Stop buying Coke. This is Martin Luther King last speech. He said, go back to using your black insurance company. Come on. Mm -hmm. That's right. This is Dr. King's last speech. Have you heard it? Yes, sir. And we're standing out here. I was with the well, sheriff the other day. He yeah. wanted me to get help on a buy back gun campaign. Uh. How can you tell the black people to get their guns back and you're killing them when you get them in jail? Come on, come on, it's contradiction what you're doing to us. But you always want to make us look like animals. Well, right. I'm wait. telling Go you, son. The only thing going to solve this problem is unity and truth. Because that's, right. that's the only thing God is involved in. Anything else is hypocritical, and you can print it up all you want, but I'd rather be a naked truth than a dressed up lie, black cloud. My friends, thank you so very much. At this time, before the family come back with us, we'll be out of here in another 10, 15 minutes at the most. But we have some important information. At this time, we're going to ask, before we do, Mile, if it's okay with you, we're going to ask Senator Fort to give us an update on the status of the request of the meetings. Then we're going to call on the people's attorney. And I'm glad to see Brother Bozeman here, too. Sometime when you hear the Davis Bozeman firm, we see Brother Davis all the time. But raise your hand, Brother Bozeman. Okay. Stand yeah. out. Yeah. Brother yeah. 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 All right. At this time, we're going to ask the state senator, the people's <laughs> senator, Mr. Ford, if he would come and give us an update. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Until the end comes. Well, uh, yesterday I spoke with Sheriff Ted Jackson. And uh, Sheriff Jackson said that he was, uh, would be glad to meet with us. Mm -hmm. We will meet with Sheriff Jackson tomorrow. All right, all right, all right. We are going to meet with him. We're going to bring the family in. And we're not going to grandstand or cut the fool. Mm -hmm. We're going to make sure that the question that the family has for Sheriff Jackson are answered. Right, right. Um, we are going to ask Sheriff Jackson to cooperate fully with any and all investigations that go on and proceed from this time into the future. Right. So we're going to meet with him. Uh, we're going to try to get answers. We want him to answer the questions he can the questions he can't answer. We want to make sure he answers those questions for the prosecutor or whomever else investigates us. Are we clear so far? Yes, yes. Sir. yes, sir. Number two, we have been in touch with District Attorney Paul Howard. All right. District Attorney Paul Howard has told us he has begun an investigation already into this situation. Uh, we will meet with District Attorney Paul Howard, the family will meet with him next week. And we will go in very serious, not grandstanding, That's it. but very serious. That's right. And we are going to implore District Attorney to leave no stone unturned, to find out answers, uh, to let us know what happened because we know this brother did not have to die. That's right. That's right. We know that, as Joe Beasley said, folk walk around with diabetes all the time. Right. That's right. That's right. It can be controlled and it can be dealt with. So we want to know why he had to die. Yeah. So we're going to ask Paul Howard to, to continue an investigation and let the chips fall where they may. Yeah. Now, we 
are not going to be satisfied with anything short of that. Yeah, that's right. This is not something where we're going to just let them go and conduct investigation. We will monitor it. We will call him. We will meet with him periodically to make sure that the investigation is real, a real investigation. We yeah. will tolerate no what? Cover-ups. Right. 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 All right? Let's so that's where we are. Our standing up and speaking up and speaking out, the community speaking up and speaking out, is what has gotten us on trade to Sheriff Jackson and District Attorney Paul Howard. That's right. So what I implore you to do is don't go home and be complacent. Teach. Because we've gotten meetings arranged. All right. This is not the end. Teach. It is not only even the beginning of the end. <laughs> it may be the end of the beginning, but we have a long journey to go together in what unity? In our pursuit of truth. We will tolerate nothing less than what? Truth at the end of the day. So God bless you. Thank you for being here. Uh, the struggle continues. We want to bring on the attorney. You know, we have the family here, and I was going to bring them on, but I think it's appropriate to have the attorney. Uh, the man who's been standing by him representing them, uh, the liberators, the people's attorney, uh, that law firm, Bozeman Davis law firm, attorney Mel Davis. Let's give him a hand. Power to the people. Power to the people. Every time we have to stand with the family, we always tell you that our power is not in that courtroom. Come on now. The power is not in any political position that people have. Check who's president and check our still our situation right now. Right. Our power is in the people. people. Right. What what y'all missed what Senator Fort just said. This family, this is two months that this family has been without answers, yeah. without yeah. meetings, without anything. And then when you showed up in two days, they're ready to meet yeah. with this family. Because the power is with who? The people. The people. You understand, y'all? This is why this is why we have to do this. Yeah. Our law firm is not in some ivory tower. It's in South Dakota. Yeah. Where who can reach us? The people. Y'all understand that this work that we are doing is a work in the interest of all of us. All right. Yeah. Right. All of us. Any of us can end up in yeah. this jail and right. any jail throughout right. the state of Georgia for something as simple as not paying a traffic ticket. And if you have right. any, if you have diabetes like I have diabetes, right. you can end up dead. All right. Right. That's madness. All right. Yeah. Yeah. And so when we yeah. come with this family, we can't ever forget the great human sacrifice. Right. Yeah. We can't ever forget that. We can't ever get too caught up in the pomp and the circumstance to remember. Right. Now, we had Douglas Brown's mother on the radio this morning, and she talked about when he came into a room that he'd smile, and the smile would be with his, not just with his teeth, but with his eyes. Exactly. And he would light up a room. And that mother was so heartbroken. She just could not make it out here tonight. But I told her and I made her a promise that tonight we would we would pray for her, for her strength. We pray for his children. We pray for his father, his stepmother, his brother who's here. We pray for them. Because when all of this is said and done, they still have to live with yeah. the reality that right. they've lost someone that they love. Yeah. That's right, bro. And so we just don't want to get caught up in this just being one more cause. Yeah. This is a family who's lost someone. Yeah. Jeez, bro. And so I just want to um, ask you all to just for a moment, let us just take a moment of reflection for Douglas Brown, for a father, a son, a brother. And then we're going to have his daughter come up and say a few words to, to all of y'all so y'all can hear that the legacy um, continues. If we could, just take a moment. Thank you. 
Yeah. We're going to bring um, Sister Kayla Brown. She's going to say a couple of words to us. This is Douglas Brown's daughter. Um, Y'all, just just warm up. Bring her, bring, give us some love right now. Give us some love. The DJ is his son. Um, you got a nephew here. These are these are our, our children now. They need our support as a community. Can you? Um, my dad he was he was a lot of things. My dad was nice. He was caring. He loved kids. My dad didn't want to hurt nobody. That's why I didn't understand why he was here. Um, I never thought I wouldn't see him again. Um. Uh, he didn't deserve to die like this. Cause my daddy won't hurt nobody. My daddy can't get his last to anybody that needs it. Uh, Alright, right. 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 can we get I, I know we have some other pastors here. Let's I know we're not we're not finished, but I just think we need a a prayer. Yeah. Um, Reverend Shannon's around here too. Jones, Reverend Jones. The information, and it will be an open book. We will know the truth. We will continue to invest investigate Karazi. But I'll tell you, there's a, uh, a eyewitness. Mm. This eyewitness was locked up in jail. Spent 16 hours a day with, with Douglas Brown. Mm -hmm. And he described some conditions that I'm not going to go into right now because I don't want to um, have her children relive all of that. But he described some conditions, you all, that we should all be ashamed of. That's right. It's on our watch. That's right. Right? This jail don't want to run itself. Teach. This is funded by our tax dollars. Teach, right? brother. And the conditions right. under which they had Mr. Douglas Brown was atrocious. That, and I think we just have to be real about that and be prepared to deal with it. I know Mr. Brown is here. We can bring up um, his father, Mr. Robert Brown, who's been fighting hard. Uh, I just like to say I'm ready to support uh, people need to realize that. You can go home from a car accident, mm -hmm. be it fall, be placed in this facility. And if you don't act right, you come out here. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's bad. That's right. That's bad. Right. And so we you can have to your brother, your sister, your mother. Mm -hmm. It can happen to any one of your members. But you don't have the control. The control is not for regular people because it's an injustice. So we need justice. And what we really need is uh, to point uh, a citizens group to look over what's happening in our, in our jail, our facility. Yes, Thank sir. You. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to give it back to uh, Brother Michael Langford. Um, again, we thank everybody for you all support. Um, my law partner, Rob Bozeman, you all, you all know, um, we follow those we follow suits and sometimes y'all see me out talking and shouting and doing kind of my part but Rob is is forcing people to be held accountable by making them respond to discovery and all of the legalese he's sitting there pushing um, behind a desk in many instances as a legal warrior and so we just want y'all to keep praying for us to keep fighting because we get more calls man we get some calls we can't even take mm -hmm. and it's just heartbreaking so I just want uh, Rob to say a word and give it back to brother Langford and then we can be um, circle up and be dismissed good evening everybody I want to thank everybody for coming out but um, of course I want to express my condolences to this family more than anything I want to pledge one thing to this family tonight mm. and that's what we're going to do at the Davis Bozeman Law Firm what they didn't do, which mm -hmm. is their job. Mm -hmm. Teach. Mm -hmm. Teach. That's what we all do. Teach. We all do our job. Yeah. Teach. You hear coaches say it all the time on the sideline. 
Do your job. Y'all right. ever heard that? Yes, do your sir. job. Yes, sir. What we're going to do is our job. And yes, our right. job is to turn over every rock, is to uncover the facts, That's is right. to request records, yes. is to review records, That's right. is to do all those things that lawyers do. But my pledge is we will do our job. They didn't do theirs, we'll do our we will do ours. Thank you all. Alright. My friends, in closing, let me say this. Thank you so very much for your presence. If we can touch and agree in our final closing prayer, we're right where you are. Remember this. What you've heard tonight is a call to action. Right, not yes. just talk. We've got to leave here tonight and go back to our communities and our venues of power and make a difference. My leader, the doubt, right Reverend Dr. Hosea Williams, used to always say, they came for the man around the corner, and nobody said nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They came for the man Joe two blocks over, and nobody said nothing. Mm -hmm. yeah. They came for the man right down the street, and nobody said nothing. Mm -hmm. They came for the man next door, Rev, and wow. nobody said nothing. Wow. Right. Then they yeah, came for me, yeah. and there was nobody to say nothing. So I encourage you tonight, continue to say something. Yeah. Because it does make a difference. Yeah. Let us pray. Dear God, our Father, we thank you for this witness tonight. We thank you for these individuals. We thank you for this Brown family. Mm -hmm. God, we commit them to your care. God, yes. when they get a little weak, we pray that you be their strength. When they get discouraged, God, we pray that you would be their motivation. God, we know that as long as they call Brother Brown's name, you'll never be forgotten. That's right. Mm -hmm. But then, God, we stand tonight as a commitment and a testament to not let his death go in vain. Yes. God, bless this gathering. Bless us all. Have mercy on us all. Yes. Amen. Amen. Amen.